Greetings, YouTube. So recently I found myself poking through my gaming folder. Now I have a folder on my computer, my hard drive, my external hard drive. I'm a big believer in external hard drives because when your system crashes, your data is safe. Um, and I've had that, that happen more than once. Um, and in my folder it says gaming. There are some 43,000 documents. That's a lot. Uh, I may or may not, not at one point in my life, been a big fan of uh, BitTorrent. Um, and I got a lot of game products in there, some of which I've never, ever looked at. So I've been kind of poking through them alphabetically and seeing what I think, if I have anything interesting that I'd like to actually dig in and read a little bit. And then I transfer said um, documents onto my phone so that I can very conveniently read them. I find my phone is the perfect medium for reading gaming books because gaming books have no narrative. So I can dip in, spend 10 minutes, and then walk away. And, you know, I, I, I don't feel any level of disappointment because when I go back, I can pick up right where I was. And I haven't missed any flow because there isn't any flow. It's awesome. I love reading gaming books on my phone. I think it's the best method. I've chewed through so many things that way. Um, and while I've been looking at these things, these folders popping things open, thinking, okay, I want to look at that later, or no, I want to look at it, and I'll buy it, you know, wow, that's a system I have no interest in, kind of thing. Um, I've had this experience because some of the ones I'm looking at are ones I've had experience with, or at least they're in my collection. And our systems have different tastes. If you're playing GURPS, that's a heck of a lot different than Hero, which is a heck of a lot different than a D20 game. They have different tastes, different flavors, different vibes, for the lack of a better word. And I get this mental framework that just pops into my skull. When I see a Star Frontiers reference, Star Frontiers come boom, and there it is. There's Star Frontiers in my head. And it has a certain framework, a certain vibe to it that, that no other game does. If I think Gamma World, I'm in, immediately going to think of the 1992 version of the 4th edition rules, and that has a flavor to it. And I've noticed this as I'm looking at these products that it's very distinct in my brain. Traveler, the first version of Traveler, those little black books, I've got them on my shelf up there. They're great. I should actually do a, do a video about those those little black books. They're cool. Um, the game where just becoming your character, getting to the, getting to start your character and character creation was an adventure in and of itself. Um, that has a flavor in my head. I remember all those things. So yes, this is an act of nostalgia. But it's not necessarily an act of nostalgia because if I you say fatal. I have no nostalgia for Fatal. Fatal is a horrible, horrible creation. I've got a copy. I think, in fact, in fact, I think I have two versions of it by, on my hard drive. Um, I'm never going to use them, but as an artifact of our hobby and as an example of this is as bad as it can get, Fatal is a great example of that. But it still has that framework in my head, a certain vibe to it, and there's no, there's nothing else that's going to have the same thing. Um, Hole, H-O-L, which is a game that is entirely handwritten, and I'm not joking. The entire game is handwritten. Um, it's whole, it's human-occupied landfill. It's a game where everybody plays characters that live in a giant dump. It's got a very weird vibe. It's unique unto itself. I haven't read it in a while. I don't know how well it's aged. Maybe it hasn't aged well. Who knows? Um, the... the the world is far more aware of problematic things from gaming um, systems and gaming products than we used to be. We used to like ignore a lot of things because it's just a game, which was a bullshit excuse back when we read them the first time, and it's a bullshit excuse now. Um, but uh, but it's still boom hole. It's in my head. I can remember holding that book, trying to decipher the, 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 what I'm looking at because it's in handwritten, and I'm not the best at reading handwriting. Um, so I want to know, have you experienced that? Do you have that instantaneous flavor in your brain when you think of a certain series, a certain uh, system? I mean, GURPS has a much different vibe to it than 1st edition D&D, which has a much different vibe than 3rd edition D&D, which has a slightly different vibe than Pathfinder 1st edition, you know, which is my my concept of the best version of D&D. Um, 
they're all different. Now, the difference between 3.5 and Pathfinder isn't big, but it's still in my head, and I still notice it. And I still get a bit of a jarring uh, experience when I suddenly find myself reading a third edition supplement, not a 3.5, but a third edition, because my brain is like, wow, we really did make a lot of improvements with the Pathfinder. Um, but they're all there in my brain. All of these flavors and vibes are in my head when I think of these different systems. And they're so clear. And they're so distinct. That the experience of looking at all these different games has really brought this into, into clarity for me. That our systems imprint themselves on us. And give us a particular framework to, to work with when we look at other systems. Because there's, there's no way we, if you've read a lot of gaming systems in your life, and I have read hundreds of them, there's no way you're not going to start making inadvertent or un, un, unconscious comparisons from one system to the other. Oh, okay, yeah, this feature right here, that reminds me of XYZ. Or, wow, I'm, looking, I'm reading something that I have no reference to, this is why. Okay, that, that does happen to all of us occasionally. We bump into something we haven't experienced. Um, and that unique experience is, is fun in and of itself. You're now acquiring a new taste, a new flavor, a new vibe. So let's talk about how these games hit us. Now, I know there is a word that I'm looking for in my brain that is philosophical, that does encapsulate what I'm talking about. I don't know if it's zeitgeist. I don't know if it's, that's the right word. But there is a word in my brain I'm looking for, and I cannot think of it. Um, and part of that is because of ADHD, and part of it is just because uh, I am not great with remembering words and, and not great at actually pronouncing them occasionally, even though I do know what they mean. And when I say advocate, I know exactly what I'm saying. I'm not saying abdicate. People think I, I am saying abdicate when I say abdicate, and I am not. Um, I have no idea why they make that confusion, because in my brain it's very clear. Um, and my mouth, my brain says, your mouth said that perfectly, and apparently my mouth didn't. Um, so let's talk about the game vibes and how we can tell them apart, how we enjoy the differences between the systems, and how we enjoy when we encounter something we've never, never you know, seen or felt or tasted before. Um, do we like that experience? Do we not like that experience? Um, so yeah, let's talk about how different systems have different flavors, because I find this a really interesting philosophical view of gaming.